just just yelling, God, I glorify you. God, I give you glory. You know how we scream and shout that, but it has everything to do with how we live our life and allowing his Holy Spirit to manifest himself through us. That's how we glorify God. So, 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 so it's about our character and how we are behaving ourselves around other people where other people look at you and they see your attitude. They see how you respond to things and, and, and how you conduct yourself. You know, when it's, when you allow the Holy Spirit to God, uh, uh, God, that, that, that part of us, that is what glorifies God. That is what God is pleased with. So we're learning that more and more every day. We're learning about his will. We're learning how to please him, uh, what the true church is all about. And uh, last night I was studying on this word called love, love, love. And I've talked about this time and time again, but God is just revealing just deeper, deeper understanding about certain things. And I'm excited to really talk about this this morning because uh, people don't know what love is. People don't know what love is. When you when you really begin to understand God's meaning of love, you'll be able to come to the conclusion that people don't know what people have no clue, no clue of what love really is. And that is why it's very difficult when it comes to getting into relationships and relationships being successful. That's why most marriages are unsuccessful. The reason why most marriages, well, yeah, because to be in a successful marriage, both people have to be in the Holy Spirit, number one. The reason why marriages are unsuccessful is because when we don't have the true concept of what love is, there's no possible way to love another human being. There's no possible way. Why? Because God is love. Type God is love. Type that. God, he's not just some individual off to the side. And what we get confused is, Thinking that he's some individual off to the side and we can just, you know, ignore him when we want to ignore him and then try to talk to him when we, when we want to talk to him and different things like that. So we treat him like he's just some human being. But when God says he is love, he's talking about his very spirit. His very spirit. His very nature. So if we have his Holy Spirit, that means that we have his very nature in us. We have his spirit. And if love is a part of God's spirit, if you don't have his spirit, then you don't have love. You don't have love. So we have a misunderstanding of what we think love is. But it's not a real love that is successful. So you have a lot of people who have married uh, in different things. And because we don't understand what God's love is, our discerning is off when it comes to each other. So we ignore red flags. We think that marrying is going to solve problems. So we marry a problem. A marriage itself doesn't solve a problem. The Holy Spirit does. You can't marry a problem away. You can't marry a, 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 a broken spirit away. A marriage doesn't fix a broken spirit. So when you marry a broken spirit, guess what? A broken spirit is only going to cause a marriage to be broken. 
When something is broken, it only breaks worse and worse. It continues to break. So the only way something broken can be fixed is that it, it, it has to be put back together all over again. So what we do is we try to marry people and get involved with people because they dress up and they, you know, we get so tricked in, 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 in thinking that, oh, well, as long as they go to church, as long as they know how to say the grace, as long as they, but I would do, we don't know how to discern the spirit of a person. Well, they really are a good person, but they, she really is a good person, but she really has a good heart, but he really is a good person. He beating on you. He cussing you out. He belittling you. He talking to you like a dog. And in your mind, you make excuses, but he has a good heart. No, he don't. And that's the problem. We don't understand what this heart thing is about. We don't understand what, what this love walk is about. But we're going to talk about it today. So y'all ready to get into it. If you got time this morning, say I got time. Listen, y'all go ahead and share this video. And when you share this, I want you to type, tune in. Tune in. <laughs> Just put tune in. <laughs> because we going to, you know what? This right here is going to allow your discernment. And not only that, but give you an understanding as to why. You are dealing with what you're dealing with. Um, some of you may be in marriages right now that you feel as though is on the verge of a divorce because you don't feel like you're being loved. You don't feel like you're being treated right. Um, some of you may be engaged and you're having second thoughts because you know deep down inside Something is off. Something is not right. Well, guess what? You are absolutely correct. You are absolutely correct. Uh, this thing called love is not something that we just say, I love you. And that's what we get tricked. We are so intrigued over somebody whispering sweet nothings in our ear. The biggest lie ever told to us was from Tina Turner when she said, what's love got to do with it? <laughs> When, and nothing against Tina Turner. I don't need no Tina Turner fans coming at me. I don't care if you come at me, but I'm just saying. Um, she and many others that we have idolized at one time, that we have listened to, Tupac. We've made things that they've said, Bible. We've, 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 we've honored Things that they've said and lived that out. But we have not honored things that the Lord has said and lived that out. So when a celebrity or when somebody says something, of course, us being humans that are naive and can be very deceived, we take things and we run with it. And that's why we continue to run into brick walls. We continue to run in the wrong direction. We continue to run around in circles and don't never get nowhere because a celebrity is not God. A celebrity is not the savior. A celebrity words are not the words that change your heart, that change your soul, that heal your soul. So we look at all these different people and we quote what they say. She said, what's love got to do with it? And then we went around and said, what's love got to do with it? What's love got to do, got to do with it? What's love but a second handy mo? Come on, y'all. Hello. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? So we never really understood what real love is. We really believed it was only a secondhand motion. Y'all know I can't sing. <laughs> so it's interesting that 
Jesus said that the greatest commandment is love. Now, Tina Turner said, what's love got to do with it? Jesus said the greatest commandment is love. So who, who are we going to listen to? Are we going to listen to the truth? Or are we going to listen to the lie? You see how that, you, you see how that, when he say, do not be of the world. Oh my goodness. That is a worldly belief that we all believed in at one time before we got saved. And that's why Jesus said, we said, repent. See, we got to repent of all that stuff. You know how we talk about repent means change, take your whole mind and throw it out. See, all that stuff got in your mind somewhere. You Somewhere you grew up and you heard, what's love got to do with it? And then, you know, Jesus said, well, love is the greatest commandment. You can't come into the kingdom of God with the old way of thinking in your mind and then you still walking around talking about what's love got to do with it. That's worldly. That's a worldly mindset. And that's the mindset that we are not supposed to live our life from. Come on. Sister Felicia said love has everything to do with it. Absolutely. Tina Turner didn't know what she was saying. Just like we we don't we didn't know what we were saying. She didn't know what we were saying. That people don't know what they say. They speak from that which they know. And then we make it biblical. We make it law. We make it principle. We make it idea. We make it into theories. And then we build our character around lies. Oh my goodness. So you get into your relationships, you get into your marriage, and then if you got the gospel of Tina Turner in your mind, what's love got to do with it? You'll never love your husband or you'll never love your wife in the manner by way of the Holy Spirit because you got the gospel of Tina Turner. That's why Jesus said when this gospel is preached to all the world, then the end will come. Why? Because there are other gospels out here that's being preached. That is a gospel that Tina Turner preached when she said, what's love got to do with it? And the world took hold of it and believed in that gospel. We took that to our relationships. Oh my goodness. So when you got two people thinking the same way, you are automatically on a defense against one another. You never come into the relationship or the marriage uh, in a oneness or in a type of agreement with one another, but really some seed have been planted in you that have caused a divide between the both of you. And both of you are really in a defense towards each other. You start out that way. You think you love each other because you didn't say I love you or you, you done bought a few flowers or you done went on a couple of dates out to eat and everything was all good. You know, people are real super nice when you first meet them and all this and that. Baby, let me tell you something. Everybody's super nice when you first meet them. And then we fall for the okie doke. <laughs> It happens all the time. And then we lie on God. The first thing we say, oh, God sent me my husband. It was God. It was God. God, this all God, 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 God sent me my husband. God sent. And then two weeks later, you divorced. Two weeks later, he beating on you. Two weeks later, she cheating on you. Two weeks later, you can't stand each other. Now you're talking about the devil sent me this person. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it wasn't, it was the, it, it wasn't that the devil 
technically sent you that person. It's just that you and that person don't have the spiritual knowledge of Christ to be able to discern what spirit is behind people. That's all that it is. That's all that it is. Come on, somebody. When God, listen, anybody sent by God, anybody who is in your life that has the Holy Spirit of God, if you have the Holy Spirit of God, you're going to know them by their fruit. Period. He said a bad tree can't produce good fruit and a good tree can't produce bad fruit. So there's going to be things that are happening in that person's life that is going to be evident. But you're not going to know that if you don't know God. See, the problem with most Christians that get into Christian relationships is that they don't know God so they can't discern if somebody else truly is of God. See, once you, once God opened your eyes up and you know this truth, you won't be deceived. You won't be, you can't, you won't be deceived anymore. Somebody, listen, ain't nobody going to date you. Them spirits know when you have the Holy Spirit in you. And not only when you have the Holy Spirit in you, but when you are yielding to the power of the Holy Spirit. Them men ain't going to, baby, let me tell you something. Them men know that you ain't going to sleep with them. They know that you really about that Christ-like life. They don't care nothing about you saying you're a Christian woman. Let me talk to the women for a minute. Men don't care nothing about you talking about you a Christian woman. And you quote no Bible scriptures on your Facebook page every day. They can see all through that. Hey, husband. Them evil spirits can see all through that. And all they doing is watching you to see how they need to come at you. When they see that all you do is just quote them scriptures and do all that, all they doing is, is masterminding their way to slide on in because they know that you are weak. They know that you think that that's what it's about. And see, you haven't gotten a real revelation of what it really means to live a Christ-like lifestyle. You a religious woman. So being a religious woman is no threat to the kingdom of darkness. They know how to get religious right along with you. They know how to get religious right along with you. So when they inbox you, guess what they're going to do? Inbox you with some scriptures. They're going to inbox you talking about, hello, beautiful woman of God. This, this, what church do you go to? They ain't did nothing but scope you out. And they know how to get down just like that. So when you are really led by the Holy Spirit, you don't have to do all that talk. It don't take all that talk. Like you got to prove by a bunch of talk or a bunch of posting that you this woman of God and this and that. Baby, let me tell you something. Them spirits know who you are. Period. Period. And they're going to run so far away from you. They're going to flee from you. Your evidence of who you are is just your overall in general attitude. Conduct, kindness, sweetness. That that see that's to be observed. That 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 that's a spiritual thing that comes from within. That's not a bunch of talk. That's not a bunch of lip service. That's not a bunch of rah 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 rah. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's not about none of that. They don't care nothing about that. That's why you get tricked and manipulated because they done scoped out your, they, 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 they don't, they, they know your pattern. They know, they know, oh, she love a bunch of scriptures or a man. He love a bunch of scriptures. Okay, well, I'm going to come to him like that then. That ain't no problem. But see, when you really 
about that Christ-like life. Your whole attitude in general, your whole lifestyle in general is going to show that. And they're going to know that. Mm, 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 mm. Hmm. That's why it's hard to find a mate on social media. Because people can be who they want to be on social media. Pretty much. Especially when they're trying to deceive and fool you. Keep If you really want to discover somebody on social media, keep scrolling. Keep scrolling. Keep scrolling. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm just saying if you if you if somebody trying to date you and all you got to go on is their social media you better turn into inspector gadget and scroll 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 dig deep look at pictures Look at the background in the pictures. When was this picture last taken? It's 2021. It is about to be March 2021. And somebody inboxing you talking about they a man of God. Hello, my dearest sister woman of God. You are just a beautiful woman of God. And, 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 and I just want to tell you that i just think that you are so gorgeous i don't mean to come off as being disrespectful because i'm a man of god myself my dad was a pastor at the missionary baptist church of god of christ in the homeless uh pulpits of jesus and the rock uh mb church and i just want to let you know that you know i know all these guys are just you know lusting after you but the bible tells us that we should not lust and, and we got to crucify this flesh and because he didn't see he didn't see you post about crucifying the flesh. So he in your inbox, we got to crucify this flesh daily. And, and then you go on his page and, and here it is. He didn't inbox you. It's, it's February 19th, 2021. He done message you and you go on his Facebook page and he put a status up on February uh, 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 15th, February 14th, Valentine's Day. Just the other day, 2021, he got a Facebook status up talking about, um, y'all, excuse me. He talking about F, F, U, F, U, H's, F, all you H's and B's. You get nothing out of me. I ain't going to, I ain't going to mess with you till after Valentine's Day because you ain't going to get a dime from me. You go through his pictures. You go through his pictures. And he got pictures. He, 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 he 45 years old throwing up gang signs. Oh, it's March 1st. Okay. <laughs> he, he, he 45 years old. 40 years old. In pictures. Throwing up gang signs. Still trying to jump around like a cute dog in his old college days somewhere. Can't barely move. And still trying to make dog sounds. He got live videos. Barking like a dog. But you, but you, you. You talking about, but he said that he's a man of God. He said his dad was a preacher and his mother was a, a mother in the church and his uncles were deacons. And you think a man like that going to be able to love you. He going to love you all right. Woo, 
y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm off. I'm, I'm, I'm off. I'm off. I'm off. All right, let's get into it. Come on. Let's go to Mark 12. Mark 12, starting at verse number 29. Let's go to Mark 12. Let's talk about this thing called love and tear down this lie. Tear down this lie of this what's love got to do with it. Let's go and tear this lie down. Type Mark 12, starting at verse number 29. It reads, Jesus answered, the most important is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Jesus is saying that him being Lord and God are all as one. He says, and you shall love the Lord, your God, mm. with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. All right. Now let's talk about this because. We've heard that time and time again. I know I used to hear that all the time. I love the Lord with all my mind, with all my heart, with all my strength. But we have no idea. It, 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 it was nothing but a bunch of lip service. It was, it was something that we were taught to say, but we never understood what it really meant. So let's go ahead and break it down. He says, and we shall love the Lord. That word love, love, love. In 1 John 3.18, 1 John 3.18 tells us this. Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. So right there, he tells us that love is not about just what we say. Oh, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. How many people say that? How many people run around saying that out of their mouth? I love God. I love God. We hear that all the time. Is that not the truth? Do we not hear people saying that everywhere? Okay. The Bible says, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. Indeed. D-E-E-D. -E -E -D. Deed. Deed means a doing. Action. <laughs> when he says indeed, he's talking about in our doing. He's talking about in our actions. Oh my goodness. Then he says, and in truth. Truth means faith, loyalty, correctness. That's interesting. Truth means correctness. Why? Because the lie is incorrect. Truth is correct. The lie is incorrect. When Tina Turner say, what's love got to do with it? That was incorrect. <laughs> oh my goodness. If Jesus says the most important is love, Oh my goodness. And Tina Turner said, what's love got to do with it? One is incorrect and one is correct. So the first thing we got to do is get the gospel of Tina Turner out of our mind. We got to get that, just throw that, throw that idea clean out the window. 
because that has been a lie. It has been corrupted way of thinking and it has really destroyed our perception of what love is when it comes to our relationships. She said that coming from a place of abuse and I also used to feel that same exact way, especially when you have been uh, a victim of domestic violence in any type of form or fashion where there have been uh, physical, mental. And if that's all you've ever known love to be, if you never have seen love past abuse, if 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 even to the point where you thought that that was love, it was totally incorrect totally corrupted there are so many women that are in abusive relationships because our perception of what love is and what we've only seen or ever known even from our own fathers or grandfathers or whatever generation on down if all you've ever seen when it comes to love was somebody being abusive while saying they love you, then that is your perception of love, which is incorrect. Which is totally corrupted. So a man, a lot of women are in relationships where they feel like a man don't love them unless he put his hands on them. If he don't put his hands on me, that means he don't love me because if he put his hands on me, that means that he's so upset with me and his emotions prove that he actually loves me because he's gotten that upset with me. It is a corrupted way of thinking. That's why a lot of women provoke men into that type of rage. Y'all don't want the truth today. Because you don't understand what love. Your love perception. Is totally corrupted. It's polluted. So, so a lot of women will provoke men. To see if they can get him that angry. And they think well. If, they, if he don't get angry. He don't really care about me. I can't pull no emotions out of him. It is a completely polluted mindset. So you build, so, so, so we build these ideas and we limit love based on our own corrupted experiences. God is love. No matter what we do with it, doesn't change the fact that God is love. And just because we've corrupted love, just because we don't have the real understanding about it, doesn't change the fact that there is something called true love out here. We just got to discover it. Many of us have never lived a life with experiencing what real true love is. He says, the Lord, he says, and we shall love the Lord, your God, that word love, love. God says, if you love me, it's going to be proven in deed and in truth. He says, with all, with all, you see that word, with all, type that, with all, 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 not no 10% of you. Not no 50% of you, not no 98%, not no 99%. Come on, somebody. He say with all, all meaning the whole 
quantity of, to the full or entire extent. So in our deed, let's put this puzzle together. Let's put this mystery of love, this love mystery together. To love God, who is spirit, spirit of our mind. If God is spirit and he's, his spirit is in our mind, he says, by way of how we think, he says, that is going to be proven in our actions, in our deed, and in truth to the full or entire extent. In other words, if you forgive somebody, you forgive them to the full and entire extent. You don't halfway forgive nobody. Oh my goodness. If you're gonna have compassionate for people, you don't have 50% compassion for people. You have compassion for people to the full or entire extent. Mm. If you're going to be kind to people. There's no such thing. As being 50% kind. Everything dealing with God. Is to the full. Or entire extent. Type that. See, this life that we live, if we say we are children of God, if we claim to be the light of the world, there is no such thing as a light only being 25% lit. You're going to see the light or you're not. When you turn on a light, even if that light is dim, guess what? You can still see light. You can still see light. Oh my goodness. Come on, Mother Janice. Extent. Extent. The full or entire extent. So when God says, and we shall love the Lord our God with all our heart. What is the heart? The heart is our spirit. That is where our subconscious mind is, which is where the spirit is. The spirit is our intellect, our will. Excuse me. It is where we get our source of information from. The spirit is the life of man. It is it is what it is what causes man to live life. His spirit is the life of him. <clears throat> so whatever is whatever is in his spirit, whatever source of information is downloaded in his spirit, that is the life of that man. So when God says, Love the Lord your God, see you have to make it plain. Because we once used to love the Lord. We, we once, excuse me, y'all, used to love <clears throat> something else. We once used to love somebody else with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. We once used to love in, in our deed and we called something else to be the truth, which was a lie. But guess what? In our actions, we loved that lie. Why? Because we carried out the deeds of the lie. In other words, we proved who or what we loved by the way we acted, by our deeds, our actions. See, at one time, we loved Satan with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Satan is a spirit like God is a spirit. Satan is a source of influence like God is a source of influence. 
<laughs> people don't want to admit that they are under the, 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 the rulership of Satan, but you are. If you're not under the rulership of God, you're under the rule. Satan is your father. Satan is your leader. The, the influence of the lies, of corruption, of incorrectness is governed by Satan. Anything that's not the truth comes from the influence of the evil one. I mean, period, point blank. Is 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 it don't matter whether you what what you can be saved and still be influenced by Satan. That's why he don't. It it it, it, it become a war with your soul. It become a war with your thoughts. It become a okay. The kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light are fighting to influence you to either do the right thing or either do the wrong thing. That's why God says even after we're saved that we still got to what? Crucify the flesh daily that we got to yield to the Holy Spirit because you still have a choice to make. When God saves you, he don't save your flesh. Your flesh ain't saved. Your soul is. Your spirit. He could God come and correct your spirit. Oh my goodness. This is what people get confused at. When you get saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, there's a place in your mind where the spirit can now dwell in your mind that is totally pure, that is not corrupted. So God puts his thoughts, his ideas, his reasonings, all of that, his principles, his law in your mind where it wasn't in there before. So then your desire, all of a sudden you now have a desire to want to be, to want to seek after him now. Whereas before you did not have that. Your desire was seeking after the things of the world. But until God give you his spirit, changes your way of thinking, now the rest of your soul got to catch up to the Holy Spirit that is already in you. Because our soul has been so corrupted with wrong information. Guess what? Now we have to begin to yield to the new information that is in our mind. So now our soul has to begin to be cleaned up. We have to begin to be uh, uh, get sanctified. All that wrong stuff that we've ever learned throughout our life has to begin to dwindle away. Your flesh ain't, ain't, God don't save your flesh. He saves your soul. So Satan still knows that you got flesh. And he knows that if you don't have the right knowledge, if you're immature and don't know how the power that you have in you, he's going to continue to tempt you by your flesh. That's why God say those who live according to the flesh cannot please God. You can't live according to your flesh and please God. He says, and we shall love the Lord our God with all our heart and with all our soul and with all our mind. And with all our strength. This is a whole complete lifestyle. God is talking about here. Love is a lifestyle. Somebody type that. Love is a lifestyle. <laughs> God says with all our soul. That's all our emotion. Our soul is made up. Of our emotions. Our our um, will, our intent. It's whatever the spirit feeds the soul. That what forms our character. And then whatever our soul 
is doing is what we're going to do physically. Everything starts with the spirit. Then it makes out the soul of the man. And then that soul of the man carries out by his deeds. So when you see somebody out here acting a fool and you're like, why are they acting like that? Why? I just don't understand why they doing that. Why are they acting like that? They off the chain and this and that. They so that's that person's soul, they spirit. It's not right. They're only doing the deeds of who they belong to. So you can't expect anything else other than that out of them. It's not possible for somebody who ain't, whose spirit have not been changed by the Holy Spirit of God. It is impossible for them to love you. It is impossible for them to respect you. It is impossible. They don't have the right knowledge or information nor power to be able to do that. That's why it's easy for a man to put his hands on a woman that he say he love. It's easy for somebody to go out and commit adultery that they say they love their wife. You got people that go out and sleep with people and then say, but I love my wife. No, you don't. You don't love your wife. You don't know what love is. Everything is convenient for everybody. We mix convenience and want to call that love. We mix up lust and want to call that love. Then he says, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Watch this. John 13, verse 34 and 35. John 13, verse 34 and 35 says this. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. When Jesus says a new commandment I give to you, he wasn't talking about a new commandment as in this commandment ain't never been spoken before. When, he, when the word new, new, N-E-W, type new. New means unfamiliar, fresh, unused. When Jesus says a new commandment I give to you, he's saying because we have not known what love is, because we have been so corrupted and unfamiliar with godly love, he says it's a new commandment that he to us that he's about to allow us to understand. The reason why we're able to understand godly love now is because the Holy Spirit have revealed it to us. The Holy Spirit have given it to us. It was unfamiliar. It was unused. We were not using love in the right manner. So this type of love that Jesus is about to give to us is unfamiliar to us. Oh my goodness. It's not unfamiliar to him. It's not new to God. It's new to us. God says, I'm about to give you a fresh understanding of what real love is. He said, I'm about to familiarize you because you done lived your whole life incorrect when it comes to love that's why y'all kill each other 
That's why you rape each other. That's why you molest each other. That's why you abuse each other. That's the reason why you cuss each other out. That's why you gossip about each other. That's why you treat each other the way you do. That's why you have rage against one another. See, and then yet you still say you love each other. But Jesus says, I'm about to give you a new commandment. I'm about to give you the real deal. I'm about to give. See, this can only be given by way of my spirit. See, I'm about to give you something that you ain't never had before coming out of your mother's womb. A new commandment I give to you. See, the only way I was able to love my husband that I have now because Jesus had to give me a new commandment because prior to my husband now I did not know love I thought love was abuse I thought a man could love you that choked you down I thought a man see I was incorrect I did not have the real deal I was unfamiliar with godly love. Then then before I, I, I got with my husband. He said a new commandment I give to you. I'm going to give you a fresh. Uh, 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 I'm about to give you something that has been unused in your life. You have never experienced. What godly love is. I got to teach you this. So you'll know what to look for the next time you get involved with somebody. You'll know what real love is that come from me. I got to teach you. You got to unlearn the incorrect love that you only familiar with. And God says, I got to correct that he says a new commandment I give to you that you love one another just as I have loved you you also are to love one another by this all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Why is Jesus so hard up about this love thing? See, when you understand what godly love is, and know that it is a lifestyle, you'll understand why Jesus said that love is the greatest commandment. We're going to end this thing in 1 Corinthians 13, verse number 4. Go to 1 Corinthians 13, starting at verse 4. Yes, Sister Lawanda, teach me what real love is. We have to be taught what real love is 1 Corinthians 13 starting at verse number 4 says this this is what love is it's not just some word that you just say out of your mouth it's what you live from your heart It's the very person that you are. Love suffers long and is kind. That word suffer. Remember how we learned that that word suffer means different things. It means to permit, allow to occur. Uh, in this sense, it's talking about long suffering. Uh, love is long suffering. Love is patient. So when, when he says love suffers long, he's saying that we allow patience to be permitted. We allow patience to occur in our lives. Love suffers long. It's patient. 
and is kind. The word kind, kind means having or showing a tender and considerate and helpful nature. You don't just be kind today and then be unkind tomorrow. You don't just be kind to somebody that's treating you right. And then if they're not treating you right, you are unkind to them. Kind is a lifestyle. To be a kind person means that that is in your very nature. You have a helpful, tender, and considerate nature. You're just a kind person. So when you go to work, people say she's a kind employee. Your reputation is that which is spoken of as you being kind. So when somebody say, what do you think about Brother Lavars Morton? Oh, he's a kind young man. Why they say that about him? Because his deeds, his actions, they have observed how he treats people. And they've come to the conclusion to say that he's a kind person. Hmm. Hmm. Love does not envy. Envy. E-N-V-Y type envy. Love does not envy. That word envy means hate, spite, resentment at seeing the success of another, to be jealous of someone else's su success. It, envy is the desire to have something that is possessed by another. Envy, envy, envy. You have resentment, spite. Your desire is so strong to have what others have that you literally, you can't function. This person and what they got stay on your mind constantly. You have a resentment about seeing what other people have and you have a strong desire to want what they have. He says love does not envy. Love, <clears throat> love does not parade itself. Love does not parade itself. Pompous parade means a pompous show. In other words, it's not a show off. Impotent outbreaks of unreasoning rage, noisy, patriotism, boast, all that stuff that them people was doing on the Capitol Hill when they were parading themselves to get their point across. Black Lives Matter movements parading themselves to get their point across. Noisy rage. Imp impotent outbreaks. Screaming, hollering. Marches. To get your point across. People do that. But that's not. When somebody says that God organized this. That's a lie. God didn't organize. God doesn't go against his word. If God says love does not parade itself. He would never organize. A hateful march he would never organize 
a pompous show. He would never organize a group of people that have outbreaks of rage. So if you're a Christian group, <laughs> if you're a Christian group and you out here in the streets parading yourself, outbreaks, hollering and bullhorns, yelling, screaming, parading yourself, putting on a pompous show. You can say it's a Christian march all you want to. That don't mean the spirit of God is behind it. Just because you call it a Christian march. And you all on your bullhorn yelling at the world. You, you all going to hell. You all going to hell. You got 25, 50 Christians. You all going to hell. You all going to hell. All y'all yelling and screaming. And you talking about all y'all on the same accord. You sure right. But it ain't. In accordance with the Holy Spirit, though. Yeah, all y'all on the same accord. But you ain't in accordance with the Holy Spirit. You lying on God. Using his name in vain. You think you're doing right because you, you think that's spreading the gospel. That's not spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ didn't do that. He did not do that. He didn't teach us to do that. That's not what he taught us to do. He didn't tell us to do that. To win the world. And you wonder why folks throwing eggs at you. You wonder why folks throwing drinks on you. You wonder why folks spitting at you and doing all that type of stuff. Because you out there with the same spirit as them. You out there with the same spirit as them. He says, love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, proud, conceited, does not behave rudely. It's rude to act like that. Rude. Means uncivil, lacking good manners. You think that is you think that yelling at somebody and telling them that they're going straight to hell, you think that that's a kind thing to do or say to a person in that manner? You don't think that that's rude to go up to people, get on your bullhorn. And just start screaming things out to them. Talking about them like a dog. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I don't care how many Christians backing you up with that. That's rude. And that's not how we're supposed to be spreading the gospel. That's not how we're supposed to be showing love. The love of Christ to the world. He says, does not behave rudely, <laughs> does not seek its own, does not seek its own. That means does not pursue. This person is not about self, about self. That's right. It, that's not kingdom. That's right. People are about self. They're about, hey, it's about me. It's about my ministry. Me, 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 my, my, my. So they pursue after their own. If it's not about them, they don't want nothing to do with it. It's, it's got to be about my ministry. It's got to be about me. Me. Own. Exclusively belonging to oneself. He says, is not provoked. Provoked, aroused, irritated, cause anger. You're not easily provoked. Love is not, you know, you out here spreading the gospel and somebody don't agree with you and you get all riled up. You 
that you you provoke to anger. So now you out there trying to get people to come to the Lord, but now you in an all out brawl. You in a you in a full out uh, arguing match with somebody. <laughs> You got to, that's why everybody not ready to be out here in the street talking about they are evangelizing. You got to have a spirit of humility and be able to accept the fact that everybody does not want to hear what you have to say and be okay with that. Still be able to maintain your character in Christ and go head on. Everybody not able to do that. So you still easily provoked. Somebody say something to you. You, 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 you. <laughs> that you not, you not ready. That's why everybody can't go on no quote unquote prayer, prayer march or whatever. Prayer walk with you. Somebody say something to them. They still in their flesh. They subject to pick up a rock. And throw it and hit somebody upside the head with it. This 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 is a serious this 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 is a serious thing here. <laughs> you get out, you go out to these communities and get out there and get, get to disturbing them them spirits out there. You going into a realm if you're not ready for that. If you're not ready to be able to know how to deal properly with evil spirits you ain't got no business out there you got to do it the way god say do it period <laughs> it says love thinks no evil thinks no evil conceive in the mind desire wish no evil that means that person's mindset is not thinking and and masterminding and 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 evil things you know you sit up all day and you just think evil you know evil in the sight of god is the opposite of good so there's only one good, which is the good that come from him. So any other thought in our mind that is not the thoughts of God is considered to be evil. So you can have in, in your mind anything that is not of God and it is an evil thought. It is being conceived in your mind. You're thinking on the wrong things. You're thinking on corrupted things. Thinks no evil. Doesn't desire wrongdoing. Does not rejoice in iniquity. In other words, you don't take delight in iniquity. So when God tells us, when he give us the spirit of love, he says that now we no longer rejoice. Re go back to joy comes from the word joy. Joy is delight. Joy is 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 that thing that gives you a strong desire, uh uh uh, where you take delight in something. So when God says does not rejoice in iniquity, at one time we used to desire our iniquity we desired wickedness we desired living a life that was corrupted we took joy in that we took delight in that so god says do not rejoice don't go back to that place in iniquity where we were hostile toward the spirit of god toward the goodness of god we were hostile so god says don't rejoice in iniquity iniquity is a place Iniquity is a lifestyle of corruption. So God says, don't go back to that place of living a lifestyle of corruption. Don't rejoice in iniquity. Once God rejoices us in the Lord, come on somebody, 
Y'all know we, we are rejoice. We rejoice. That's what it means to rejoice in the Lord. That's why he say in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Because at one time we took delight and we were, we was full of joy in Satan. But God said, I had to redeem you so you could rejoice back in me. <laughs> back in the truth. Rejoice in the truth. Truth is the Lord. Truth. Jesus, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, rejoice in me. Rejoice in truth. I am truth. My spirit is truth. My spirit is holy. Rejoice. Take delight in holiness. Take delight in truth. It says, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. <clears throat> you know why this word is a mystery? You know why? There's no way to understand 1 Corinthians 13, verse number 7, without the Holy Spirit revealing to us what that means. First Corinthians 13, seven says, love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. You have to ask yourself, what does that mean? All things. See, with a carnal mind, all things can mean any old thing. But once the Holy Spirit revealed to us what God is talking about, when he says all things, things we learn means matters, counsel of God. So when he says bears all things, all is everything that comes from him. So the word bears, B-E-A-R-S, means to endure without resistance. So God says, Love bears all things. That means we endure without resistance all the things that come from God. The whole counsel of God. All the matters of God. See, this is why this is a mystery. Because he's not going to tell you straight out. This has to be discovered and revealed by the Holy Spirit. Now we can put it together. God says, it's not for everybody to look at this scripture and understand what he's talking about. God is speaking to those who have the spirit. And he says, we are to endure without resistance all the matters of God. Bears all things. I cannot resist the Holy Spirit. I cannot resist the counsel of God, the word of God. I've got to bear it. I've got to endure. I've got to endure when God say, love my enemy. I've got to endure when God say, be patient. I've got to endure when God say, be kind. I've got to endure. Come on. When God says, don't envy. I can't resist that counsel. I can't resist that information. That's all things. My husband say his way all day. Come on. He says, believes all things. See the all things in here is hidden to the unbeliever. Nobody knows what all things are until the Holy Spirit reveal what all things are mean that's why everybody can't hear this teaching everybody can't because the only way you can hear what i'm teaching is that the holy spirit got you over here and have opened up your understanding this is not for everybody it cannot possibly be for everybody it's not interesting to everybody 
You all don't understand that this is a mystery that have been revealed to you. God has revealed what all things are. He says, believes all things. That word believe means to be in oneness, be in agreement with. Okay, we just learned to bear all things. We know that all things means the whole quantity, the whole matter, the whole counsel of God, right? So God says, endure everything about me without resistance, all of my counsel. And then he turns and says, be in agreement with it. My God, believe all things willingly, be in agreement, become in oneness, willingly in all matters of me. Then it says, hopes all things. Hopes, hope. Hope means confidence. Trust in God's word. That's what hope means. So now he says, hope, be confident in all the matters of me. Trust in my word. Love hopes all things. We are confident in all the matters of God. We trust in the counsel of God. If God says be kind, be loving, be gentle, don't fornicate. We, we, we have confidence in trusting in what he's telling us is right for our soul. Is correct for our soul. Come on somebody. I have confidence my, ooh, in the counsel of God. And then he says, endures all things be firm solid steadfast god says now is time to endure we have to endure be steadfast don't be moved Stay solid. Remain in place. Don't let nobody throw you off. Endure all things. Every day, you every day is a day to endure. My husband was saying that he was having a kind of a off day uh the other day, and he called me and he said that he was a irritated about some stuff and had a lot going on on his job and you know he he been learning every day every day him along with the rest of us have been learning about you know how the real test don't come until the test come <laughs> i mean we can sit on here every day and amen and this and that but it don't it it, it don't mean a hill of beans until it's put to practice okay it god's word is meant to be tested Put to practice. And, and, and so he just, he we were just talking about how we're being twisted, how we are being observed and being tested in the quality of our faith. Now he teaches a kingdom teaching every day uh, on his job that he's at work. He teaches a group of men about their character, their behavior, and trying to get them to understand what it means to live a life that glorifies God. So when he was calling calling me and telling me about his day, he was kind of, you know, irritated and just kind of venting out to me and different things. I know he don't mind me telling y'all this. And um, I'm just listening to him, you know, and I, I just had to remind him. See, that's what that that's why we have to remind each other. See, this is what church is all about. This is what church is all about. We 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 have to rem I had to remind the man of God. That he's being tested in the quality of his faith, you know. And so he went on to say that he hadn't eaten all day and, and that probably got him irritated. See, remember when the devil tempted Jesus, Jesus had not eaten either. See, you got the, and I told my husband, I said, go eat. 
Don't never get so busy where you're not eating. See, the enemy know that 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 them them thoughts know how to come in and in your weaknesses that keep yourself strengthened. Come on, somebody, keep yourself strengthened. That's when he go see my husband hadn't eaten, so he was easily able to get irritated because he wasn't fueled up. He wasn't he hadn't ate anything all day, and here it is, way out in the afternoon, way out in the afternoon. Grab you something to eat. Grab you something to eat. Don't leave no opportunity for the enemy to come in and start getting all in your mind and taking you out of character because that's all. That's the whole goal. Every day is a game. Every day is a goal. The enemy trying to, trying to win the game of bringing you out of your character and proving that you don't have no quality. <laughs> When it come to your faith in Christ. And then the Holy Spirit in you is saying, okay, endure, endure, endure. Guess what? Today may not be a, 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 a day that's going to be smooth. I may allow tests to happen today. Why? Because you heard my word early this morning at 6 o'clock. Now it's time to put it to the test. Them same men that he taught. That morning about behavior, about love, about patience would really be messed up if my husband turned around and showed opposite of love, opposite of patient, would have been cruel to them, would have been snapping out on them. See, that's why Christians are called hypocrites. See, it, 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 it's all a test. Oh, my goodness. And I told my husband, rejoice in the Lord. Listen, you have to look at it a different way now. See, there's something that God is trying to do through you to them. Those guys need to possess what you got. So when you pass the test, Every day they are observing more and more and believing more and more. Oh, this is real. Oh, this, uh, okay. Oh, this is a part of his nature for real. Oh, he just ain't just telling us something. He ain't really about their life. See, it's all a test. And guess what? God is doing something in their spirit. You don't, you don't, you don't know the extent of what God is doing. You don't know the levels. You don't know the measures of what it's going to take. But guess what? We ain't supposed to know. All we supposed to know is what God say and endure what God say to endure on our end. The rest of it is God's business to handle. We're not going to understand why some people every day keep doing the same thing, acting the same way. They still, why they still cussing? They not, not be, no, you can't say that because guess how long it took us? To stop, somebody was saying the same thing about us. You still fornicating? You still cussing? You still drinking? You still smoking? Their time is going to come when it's their time. But if they're still listening to you, oh my goodness. Don't concern yourself with the wise. Why are they still doing this? Why are they still doing that? But be concerned with the thank you, Lord, that you still have an influence over them. Because that means that God still has their attention. And in their timing, they'll have their breakthrough in their timing. But while you have the opportunity, you use that space to continue to pour knowledge into them to continue to teach the word to them you just keep at it keep at it keep at it because as long as they are sitting there listening <laughs> oh my goodness yes plant 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 we are planters So you ought to be happy that somebody is in your space 
that, 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 that gives you an opportunity to plant. That's why you, we, we got to get to a point where we're not taking things personal because it's all a matter of the enemy trying to get you out of your character and prevent them from seeing the glory of God through you. Or it's about you enduring and being able to, to, to not resist the Holy Spirit in that opportunity to be able to ignore all the personal quote unquote attacks on you, but to be able to display the glory of God through all of that. So that person can say, what must I do to be saved? You are a very important person. And I don't think that we realize how important we are out here in the earth realm. You are so important that you are a host of somebody's kingdom. <laughs> a host or a hostess is one of the most important people in a restaurant. Who is the first person you see when you walk into a restaurant? Who, who is the first, your first contact when you go into a restaurant? You know why the host got to be on point? Because that your experience with the host will determine whether or not you continue your dining in that restaurant. Your experience with the host, not the cook. But the, you see, when you go to work, you are a host and a person's experience with you will determine the quality of your faith. Your family's experience with you will reveal what host that you are. To what kingdom you belong to. And if you are host for the Lord. You got to go by the Lord's rules. People who host in a restaurant. It's not supposed to matter what kind of day you having baby. You got to leave your feelings in your car. You got to leave your feelings to the side. But when you put on this hosting uniform and you hit this time clock, the expectation is for you to go by our hosting rules. That means smile at the customer, even if you feel bad on the inside. You got to still be, hello, hello, welcome. Welcome to our restaurant. How many? A party of five? Okay. Oh, you look so sweet and nice. Meanwhile, you could be having a bad day. But the people don't see your bad day. What they see is a person that have approached them with kindness, with a loving gesture, with, 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 you know, and so that draws them and they want to experience more. They want to experience more of that. I got to go, y'all. I got to go. I got to go. Did everybody, y'all understand what love is? How love is not just something that we just say, but it's something that we live. This is a life that we live in. God allows us this. Loving each other. Loving one another is the solution to all this evilness that we see happening between human beings out here in the world. 
And the Holy Spirit is the only solution. That's why it's important that we be his host around these people. Because that's the only way that they're going to be drawn in. No different from a restaurant. The purpose of the host is to make the first impression where people want more of that restaurant's experience. God uses us the same way. Our first impression toward people is to draw people in so they want to experience more of what we are experienced when it comes to God. I'm drawn by your love. I'm drawn by your kindness. I'm drawn by your compassion. I'm drawn by the peace I see on you. I want to experience that more. I want to experience that. I want more of that. And that's when you have the opportunity to tell them that the only way you can get this, that this can be given to you, is to repent and come to the Lord where he give you a new spirit. I am so grateful for truth. I would never know how to love again if the Holy Spirit had not given love to me because I was broken. I was disgusted. If you're dealing with a marriage, you're dealing with a spouse, you're dealing with people who God has not given love to, there are two things that you must do. Number one, you recognize that that person needs to be saved. You pray and you ask the Father to visit that person. The second thing is to live your life around them. Endure and not resist the ways of the Holy Spirit around them because to minister to them is by action, not by words. And as difficult as it may be to be kind to somebody who's not being kind to you, you got to get in your mind that it is for the Lord's sake and it's for their salvation. And your kindness is your nature. So nothing that they do should be able to change your nature. Listen, no matter where I go, I'm still going to be black. <laughs> no matter where I go, I'm still going to be black. I can go in a room full of white people. But them being white is not going to change the fact that I'm still going to be black. And you can see that. So what am I saying? When your nature has been changed to God's nature. And you're in a room full of people who are unkind, unloving. That doesn't change God's nature in you.
their actions don't change the new nature that God has given you. And you got to remember that every day. That's why God say, love your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. It takes strength to endure and to maintain a Christ-like nature around a world full of people that are full of hate and evil. But if God did not think we could do it, he would not request it of us. He gave us his spirit and has given us the power to endure. Now we need to catch up with that and perceive that and begin to flow in that. Hallelujah. Give God some glory. If you've been blessed by this word, just say, Lord, I've been blessed by your word. As we leave off of this live, I want to remind you that your love walk is a lifestyle. 